we feel good about our praise as our spirits are ignited and turned toward the beauty of God's holiness. For God is holy and we worship him in the beauty of his holiness. And so we seek to do all things decently and in order. And I thank God for all of you who are serving in your different places of service, all of our officers. Lord, richly bless you, each and every one. Let us unite our hearts together as we make ready to receive the word of God according to the will of God. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your presence, your power, your, your spirit that uplifts our fragile souls. We thank you for goodness and mercy, blessings seen and unseen. Now, Lord, speak to us out of your sacred word and continue to instruct us, lead us, guide us, and build us up in our holy faith and our service and walk uh, that we might do all things according to your perfect will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Be glorified in us and sanctify and set us apart from all evil. In Jesus' name, let us be a blessing to others as you have been a blessing to us. Amen. Today's message is I have been titled a bold Christian testimony. And if all of you Christian warriors, you fearless saints, you can relate to this subject because you know that God has called us to be strong uh, in our walk with him. I'm talking about to those of you who say things like, for God I live, and for God I will die and mean it. I'm not giving reference, a reference to the pseudo Christians or those who, who flee in the face of adversity, but to those who are equipped, who have put on the whole armor of God and that you are ready for the fight. You realize we wrestle not against flesh and blood. People are not our problems, but in things and situations and circumstances, but it all, all of our problems and difficulties have their origin in one source. And that is the powers and principalities the rulers of the darkness of this world, we're speaking none other than our great enemy, the devil. Amen. And he and his fallen uh, angels, these fallen angels, these demonic beings, do everything they can to come against the will of God, uh, the word of God, the kingdom of God, the principles of God, and the people of God. Amen. And so we realize as soldiers, we are to be bold and courageous. The idea of being bold means to be fearless. God wants us to be fearless no matter what come our way. Be strong in the law and in the power of his might. He want us to be like David when Israel was faced with the giant Goliath. 
saw was scared. His big old tall, good looking brothers were scared. The soldiers were scared. But David wasn't scared. Because David had a bold Christian or coveted testimony. David was fearless. To be bold is to be fearless in the face of danger. It's like our brother over there with that cancer. He's not huddled up and balled up in a corner somewhere crying, why me? He's in church giving God the glory and asking for deliverance. He's not weeping and cowering. He's, I live for God and I'll let God's will be done. That's boldness. And some of us, we cry and run if we break a fingernail. And yet I see some bold Christian testimonies. And I commend you, those of you, to stay strong and steadfast. And those who are scary Christians, we want you to be strengthened. We want you to man up in this holy walk and fight in faith. Be fearless. Be like Desiree. In the face of her affliction, she's still holding on and won't let go. Be like Job. I'll wait till my change come. And when I have been tried, I shall come forth as pure gold. I want to be like Paul, very confident. To be bold is to be confident in the face of, of a difficult situation. Listen to Paul. Paul was like that. And we're going to look at Paul in a couple of situations as I uh, preach on this particular subject. In Romans chapter 1, one of our favorite uh, passages of scripture Romans 1 and 16, Paul says, For I am not ashamed. First, first Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed. I don't care what happens in this life to me. This is Paul. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What about you? You ashamed? You ashamed to tell people you saved? Or you ashamed to tell sinners that they need to repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of sins? Or you ashamed to let them know you love the Lord and that the Bible is your source of information on how to live? Paul said, I'm not ashamed. Why, Paul? Because it is the power of God. There is power in the gospel. The good news that Jesus is the Christ, the Savior of the world. Knowing Jesus makes everything all right. Jesus can heal the sick. That's why I ain't scared of getting sick. Because if Jesus want me well, I'm going to be well. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But if he don't want me to be well, that's all right too. Because as Martin Luther King said, I just want to do his will. He didn't make Job well. Until he got ready. So God can do whatever he wants with this life. I just want to maintain, if you don't get nothing else out of this message, the goal of the Christian is to maintain a faithful testimony. 
No matter what happened to you, it don't matter. Whatever happened to me, it don't matter. Just so long as whatever happened in the midst of it all, God is glorified. He said, it is the power of God to salvation. I'm going to be delivered. If I'm not delivered down here, I'll be delivered over there. In my father's house are many mansions. I believe it. If I don't believe it, I'm going to be running scared. He said, I'm not ashamed. You know what it means to be ashamed? It means to f have, feel guilt. F feel disgrace or dishonor. To feel inferior or unworthy. He didn't feel out of way about preaching the gospel. There were people always wanting to kill him for preaching. Just like they crucified Christ, Jesus said, The servant is not greater than his master, nor the disciple greater than his Lord. If they have called me Beelzebub, the devil, what do you think they're going to call you? How will they treat you if you are walking and talking just like me? So be ready for the devil to come against you. Just be a bold Christian serve and maintain a holy, bold testimony. Paul said, I'm not ashamed. I don't feel no guilt about preaching. I'm not scared to preach. People are scared to preach. Scared to teach. Scared to witness. Scared to testify. Ashamed. After all God has done, because sometimes we're more worried about what people think about us. What they're going to say. What they feel. I'm not worried about what people think about me. I'm concerned about what God knows about me. He said, this is a power to deliver salvation to everyone that believes. To the Jews first, they were the called out ones, and to the Greeks, which basically is non-Jews, all Gentiles. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Bold testimony. What is a testimony? What is your testimony? A testimony is an outward expression or declaration of what an individual Believes. We say we believe in God, but do your neighbors know it? Make it plain. Make it plain. I'm talking about a bold Christian. Come on, make it plain. I'm not talking about a timid. Come on, make it plain. I'm not talking about a coward. Make it plain. Spiritual weakling. I'm talking about bold God. He has said to me, son, you ain't got that much time left. Be bold with the witness. The sinners, they're bold. They lie all out in the open. They live ugly in the open. They're mean-spirited in the open. They don't care what you think or what you feel as they live ungodly. Why are we worried about what people think when it comes to giving God the glory? We scared to speak the truth because we afraid we're going to lose some friends. We love more, we care more about what people think. Describes in the Pharisee, Jesus said they love the praises of men more than the praises of God. I want God to praise me. And if I'm bold with his truth, he will honor those that honor him. A testimony is uh, one displaying what one has witnessed or experienced. And you can't testify if you ain't seen nothing. You can't testify what I have seen or I have experienced, but you can testify what God has done for you. You can testify how. I don't know how. Yes, you do. 
How were you saved? Tell somebody how you were saved. That's right, that's right. If you were saved at all. Well, that's all right, preacher. Some folks can't tell nobody can't tell how them. they were saved because they're not sure if they were saved. You better know what you know about Jesus. It is time out for scary Christians. Oh, I know this don't feel too good, but it's good. It's going to be good for you, but it's going to be more better for the kingdom of God if you will step out of your comfort zones and let God work with what he has given you. We got secret agent Christians. Private eye Christians. They're private. You don't know they're secret. They don't want you to know. We undercover Christians. I, I need for you not just to be a Christian when you're in front of Pastor Ford. All right. Or when you're in the church. I need for you to be one out there with the sinners and unbelievers and the wicked and in your family and in your friends and your loved ones. You see, the church would be different if we, and don't right now, just be thinking about everybody else's testimony. What about your testimony? How many people have you led to Christ by the power of Christ in you by your testimony? How many people did you tell how bad you used to be? Come on. How many people have you shared how bad you still are? Don't act like. Don't act like we have arrived. That's right. That's right. It's a process of natural. We are growing, but we've been planted. We, our roots are in Christ and we go bear some fruit what I'm encouraging you to be bold as Jesus said herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit I ain't trying to just be no mediocre Christian no goma pile Christian huh? no private I want to be a high-ranking soldier for the glory of God. I want to be a high-ranking king's kid. I want to tear down Satan's kingdom wherever I find it, casting down imaginations and every wicked thing that opposes the kingdom of Christ and his holy word. Pull down strongholds and imagination and anything that contradicts scripture. I'm against it. Come on, preaching. Make it flat. We we some emotional folk, but the emotion is misdirected. All that anger and frustration and all that badness and all that gangster in you on, should be used for the glory of God. You don't worry about what people think and you don't care about what they say. Well, let's see. Say something about Jesus. Win some souls to Christ. Let God's light shine through you that somebody may come out of darkness. Let's see God change others through your hands, your eyes, your tongue, your conversation, your walk. Inspire others. You said that's the pastor's job. That's the preacher. That's the job. We're the light of the world. Preacher. That's the reverend job. That's, it. that's the women in ministry work. It's our work. We got to tell them what we know to be true. What we believe to be true. What we've seen and heard. When you go to court, you can only tell what you saw. Did you see him save you? Did he turn you from sin? How did he do it? Why are you in church? When did you get in church? Did you repent? 
What does that mean you repent? Why don't you get baptized? Mm -hmm. right. That's not just for the preacher to know. That's right. Repentance. Come on. Turning from sin. Yeah. Repent, Jesus said. Sorry. And be baptized. Be sad. Yes, be mad at sin. Be sorrowful, grieve, and cry and weep. That's it. Broken. When I got saved, I was tired of myself. I was tired of my mouth. I was tired of my attitude. But I'm afraid some folks not tired of themselves yet. They full of themselves. And that's why they always mad and always frowning and always complaining but can never do nothing good for Jesus. Can't inspire, can't uplift, can't encourage. Because where is the spirit of God? Where is the bold Christian testimony? Oh, they can be bold in the workplace. They can give beautiful speeches on their job. <laughs> but they can't give a welcome in church. Come on. Oh, you don't want to hear it. Come on, I do. I do. That's what I came for. I hear I'm talking about having a bold testimony. Make it plain. That I'm living just to please God. Come on, make it plain. Please. I don't have to have no money to please God. Uh -uh, uh -uh. I don't have to have no fine home to please no, God. No, I don't have to have no bad ride. And all of that is good. That may help me to please God and be convenient and comfortable. But that don't mean I shouldn't serve God or I'm not blessed or God is not with me because I'm broke and I'm ragged and I'm uneducated. But I got a testimony. I'm saved. I have been delivered from my unrighteousness. I love everybody now. God has cleansed me of prejudice. God has cleansed me of covetousness. I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I don't have to shop at the fine stores no more. I don't have to have jewelry and diamonds. Nobody has to love me no more because Jesus loves me. Nobody has to be my friend. Nobody has to encourage me. Nobody has to wake me up on Sunday and tell me to go to church. I go because I love my Savior. Nobody has to pry me out of the bed and beg me to say a scripture because I love to quote wait the way of God. Because God has been good. The word changed my life. The word has made me whole. The word has given me peace. And it can give you peace, brother. The word can change you. The, the word can, can stop substance abuse. The word can fix alcoholism. The word can take away a lustful spirit. The word can make you whole again. Brother, I got something that money can't buy. It's free. It is the word of God. It is the spirit of God. Brother, you don't have to have your head hung down. Sister, you don't have to have your head hung down. You say everybody forsaking you. Nobody loves you. Nobody likes you. Guess what? Jesus died for you. Jesus loved you so much. He went to a cross for you. They nailed his hands for you. They nailed his feet for you. They stuck him in the side for you. What you talking about? Don't nobody love you. The king of kings loves you. You talking about I'm sad because I ain't got no husband. You don't need no husband. You need Jesus. I'm sad because because I ain't got no wife. Your wife don't mean nothing. Jesus can give you spirit, your spirit uplifting joy. Jesus will be your wife. And your wife forsake you. Job's wife said, curse God and die. That's right, that's right. Job looked at her and said, you must be a fool. Shall we receive at the hand of, he had a bold testimony. Yes, he did. I don't care if my wife don't like me. And it don't stop me from going to church. I don't care if my wife mad and complain and mean and wicked. That don't mean it got nothing to do with my soul. I don't care if my husband is low down and trifling and won't go to work. 
I'm still going to serve God. If nobody else going to show up, I'm going to show up. Mama don't have to go to church. Mama can't save my soul. Daddy can't save my soul. Little brother can't help me. I'm going to help myself. Because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it gives me power. Power not to be depressed. Power not to go to the hospital. Power not to be laying down crying all the time. Power to have joy in the midst of sorrow. Power to be full when I'm broke. Power when I feel like I'm walking by myself. When the people tell me they don't love me, you ain't my friend. When they roll their eyes well, and talk behind my well, back, when they throw knives at me, well, that's all right. Jesus got my back. You better believe it. You better believe it. You better believe it. You need your strength like the evil. When they talking about I ain't going to make it, but I'm making it every day by the grace of God. When they say I couldn't accomplish it, when they wishing me evil, when they mad at my blessings, when they're jealous of the goodness of God to me. Be mad. Because the Lord bless those who have a bold testimony. If you don't believe it, ask Moses. You better believe it. You better believe it. I ain't come with it, but so did y'all. God will take care of you when you have a bold testimony. I'm closing with this. Paul was headed for Jerusalem in Acts chapter 20. They said, Paul, when you get to Jerusalem, because Paul was on a mission, and I'm on a mission. I don't know about you, what you're doing. I don't know why you go to church. I don't know why you sing. I know why you tell me. I know what I see. But God knows what's really in your heart. Because there's hypocrites all around. You better believe it. There's hypocrites everywhere. I ain't saying they ain't here, but I know they're everywhere. There's some fakers. You better believe it. There's some actors. There's some folks who would get Grammy Awards and Oscars for pretending that they love God. Because how you going to love God and hate me? How you going to love God and talk about me all the time? How you going to love God and keep on hurting my feelings? How you going to love me and keep stabbing me in the back? How you going to love me and every time something good happened to me, you make it sad? How you going to love me? Oh, I know some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, yes, sir. Because, see, the devil is after us. I'm tired of making excuses, ain't you? Make it plain. Let the haters hate. Let the haters hate. While they hate God, is blessing. The haters can't stop us. You better believe it. Because we got a bold Christian testimony. We're going to do what God tells us, and we don't care. Even if we look bad, they don't know we're still looking good. We can look bad. It looked bad for Jesus on the cross. It looked bad when he was carrying that cross. It looked real bad when they were stabbed. It looked bad for Jesus when he had that crown around his head. They said, come on down, prophesy. They mocked him and made fun of him. But he died anyway because he was doing what God told him to do. He had that bold testimony unto death. He looked bad on the cross. But oh, come Sunday morning. Oh, three days later, three days later, three days later, he got up on that grave. He got up on that grave, boy. And I'm telling you, when he got up that grave, he looked real good. He looked good to me. Because anybody that can conquer death, I know he can take care of any problem I got. Anybody that can be abused like that, stripped down naked, humiliated, humiliated. That's right. and then died for me, mm-hmm. and then the third day, roll away the stone, open up the cave, take off the grave pole, and get up and say, all oh, power. You did your thing to me, then, but now all power is in history. Guess what?
because I know all power in his hand, I ain't ashamed of this gospel. Because I know all power in his hand, I'm going to have a bold Christian testimony. The doors of the church are open. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. Can God be the glory?